Hallelujah. Come on, open your mouth and begin to give him praise. Don't let the man be a hymnless amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
We thank you that you are the same Jesus. If you healed then, you heal now. And we give you praise and glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Come on and shout amen. amen. Come on, go ahead and think about the elements. Some of you may say, well, some of you watching at home, why y'all take communion every Sunday? Because the Bible says, as often as you do this, do it and remember something. You don't have to wait till the first Sunday. Amen. Then in the book of Acts, it said they went from house to house doing it. So you can take communion at home. Amen. Amen. Now, when we take this communion, we are remembering Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And what that means for us. It means three things. Galatians 3, 29. Galatians 3, 13 says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. That means we're redeemed from sickness. Amen. That means we're, we're redeemed. We're redeemed from poverty. Amen. Amen. And we are redeemed from spiritual death. Amen. And so every time we take this communion, we remind ourselves what we're redeemed of. Yeah. I know the enemy may be attacking you. He's just trying to fool you. Yeah. But see, when you know that you know that you know that you know, he can't fool you. You, you. you know what? When you at home and you got something going on, get your cup out. Get, get your cup out. I ain't talking about your red cup. I'm talking about your grape juice cup. Get your Kool-Aid out. Get your bread out. And say, devil, you see what I got in my hand? Jesus paid the price for me to walk in victory. And I don't care what it looks like. I'm going to have victory. Some of you think something miraculous got to happen. You can get healed by the word of God. By yeah. simply acting on your face, I believe I receive it now. It doesn't matter what your body says. We stand on the word of God. Amen. Yeah. So those of you at home, if you have your communion element, take the bread, which represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Know that Jesus' body was broken. So yours doesn't have to be. Amen. Your body doesn't have to be broken. Your bank account doesn't have to be broken. Your relationship don't have to be broken. I'm not making this up. He said the word. So I declare wholeness. Whatever's broken, nothing missing, nothing broken, and nothing lacking in your life. Come on, somebody say, I receive it. I receive it. You receive it what? By faith. By faith. Amen. So Father, we thank you for wholeness in every area. We speak wholeness in this country. We speak wholeness in Clayton County. We speak wholeness in Warren County. We speak wholeness in Jefferson County. We speak wholeness in Capaya County. And we speak wholeness in our house. In Jesus' name, you may partake. Well, Pastor, okay, how do I know I'm going to get what the word says? Jesus shed his blood. The blood of Jesus is our guarantee. Well, I didn't see him shed his blood, but he said it in the word. And faith coming by hearing, and hearing by what? The word of God. The word is, Jesus was the word in action. So everything Jesus did, the word will still do. We just need somebody to lay hold of. So I know there are several of you. Some of you have a hurting in your side, on your left side. The Lord said, if you release your faith, healing comes today. Yeah. Not tomorrow, not when you come to the doctor, today. Yeah. Then the Lord said, somebody on your right big toe, something happened with your big toe on your fist, something going on with it. He said, healing is here for you right now. Yeah. All you got to do is say, I receive it. And it's not just for people here. People who are watching, see, yeah. the gifts of the Spirit move to meet the needs yeah. of people, not so folks to show out. Yeah. Somebody say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not crazy. He's real. And when you come to church, God wants to meet your need. So, based on the word of God, we're healed. We are not the sick trying to get healed. We are the healed protecting our health from sickness and disease. I don't care what the doctor said. It's in, you know what said? Jesus is bigger than coronavirus. Jesus is bigger than lupus. Jesus is bigger than hate. Jesus is bigger than cancer. You just gotta believe that you receive it. Somebody say, I believe. I believe. I receive. I receive. You may partake. Somebody say, all is well. All is well. Somebody say, all is well. 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 
Amen? Amen. Amen. And that there are people who are asymptomatic. Yeah. And they may not, they may not show any signs, but they can give it to you. Yeah. So we want to use wisdom. See, sometimes people get into foolishness because they say, God got me. Yeah. That's ignorance don't the see. God has you, but you gotta do your part in the natural. Right. If they say wear a mask, then we wash you. Wear a mask. If they say put the sanitizer on your hand, what you do? We gonna have, we got so many sanitizer stations around here, we don't know what to do with. Because we're gonna do what we're supposed to do. If they say social distance, then you gotta do what? Social distance. And then don't be crying later talking about what happened. What, what did God let that happen? No, it ain't why God let it happen. What did you do? Yes, right. Amen. All these big gatherings and stuff, you all, it is not over yet. We're believing that it's over soon, but it's not over yet. Then let me talk about these saints who said, I, I'm scared to go to church. You go everywhere else. I say, if the church is open and if they're doing things the right way, amen, there is a process. Me and another pastor, we're actually working on something that we're going to do online to explain to pastors, these are the steps you need to take. These are the things you do. Not that we got it all together, but let me tell you something, it's working and you come to see me. We've been doing it since you like, come on, give God a praise. in fear, a little, uh, there may be some fear, but when you're in fear, you do it anyway. Yeah. When you've heard from God. Yeah. Now, if you don't know if you heard from God, then you need to stay home. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for a fresh anointing. Lord, thank you for this beautiful congregation who are here today, Lord. Thank you that they didn't stay home. They are here in the sanctuary, and I thank you that they will receive double for their trouble. I can tell that everybody that came today, that whatever they need, they'll get it before they walk out the door. So, Father, I thank you for speaking through my lips and, and, and thinking through my mind on the anointed word of God. I declare all of you and all of me, I declare every ear is anointed to hear, every heart is anointed to receive. And we release the healing power of God right now. Healing of heart problems and diabetes and high blood pressure and cancer and AIDS and coronavirus. And Lord, we keep on release healing for soul sickness. Sickness in our emotions. Brokenness. Hurt. Despondency. Pain. Frustration. Anger. We release the word of God. And we thank you for it now. But we thank you that most of all, somebody will come to know Jesus in a true and real, real way. And say, Jesus, man, we pray. Somebody shout amen. 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 Give the Lord another hand clap for praise. To all of our guests, thank you so much for tuning in with us. You could be at any church. And then, see, all you got to do, you ain't got to put your finger up. Now all you got to do is click. You can go somewhere else. But thank you for joining with us. Join with us. I'm right on time. Amen. Join with us for the next 25, 30 minutes. I'm going to give you a word. We're going to preach the word. But for you believe, God, that you're going to hear the word behind the word. Not just hear what Pastor Cooper said, but what is the Holy Ghost saying to you? Amen? Amen. All right, go to Psalms 103. Psalms 103, we preach in series, and I've been doing a series. Can you all hear me okay? I, I'm, I'm being sophisticated today. I'm using my head, my cordless mic. Oh, yeah. 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 Like that one and that one. Get them. Yeah. They, know, they know who they are. Yeah. Uh, Psalm 103, I said, that was quiet. Psalm 103. Bougie. Psalm 103. Amen. Psalm 103. Now, we believe and we preach the word. The word is what's going to get people out of their situation. Not my opinion. Not get up here and talk about what's happening in the world on the news. The word of God. How do you know that, Pastor? Because the word is changing me every day. The more word you get, the more change will come. The less word you get, the less change you'll have. And I'm not just talking about hearing somebody else preaching. What are you doing on a daily basis? Are you spending quality time with God? You got 24 hours in a day. You can at least give him 10 minutes. Amen. 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 You give him 10 minutes. Amen. He give you 24 hours. You can give him 10 minutes. Amen. God must become our priority. Amen. Not work, not church. Amen. Not going to the club, Amen. not hanging out with family, but Amen. God is our number one priority. Say that. God, God is, is our number one, our number one priority. priority. All right, Psalm 103, we're going to start reading at verse number one. Our subject this morning, if God heals, 
Why am I so sick? Someone say that with me. If God heals, why am I so sick? Why are there so many people in the body of Christ so sick? Number one, lack of knowledge. Write that down. Lack of knowledge. Okay? There are churches who don't believe in healing. There are churches who teach you that healing passed away over 2,000 years ago. They teach you that healing passed away with the last of us. There is, there is no scripture in the Bible for that. The, the problem is, in the body of Christ, we're afraid to believe God. Because we always have in the back of my mind, what if it don't work? Well, we need to change that. What if it does work? Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. Psalm 103, verse number 1. We're going to read verses 1 through 5. We are in an active church, so why don't you read aloud with us? Ready to read. Bless, bless the Lord, Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget thy all his underlying benefits in your Bible. And if you got a Bible you can't write in, throw it away and get you one that you can't. Benefits. Benefit. With God comes benefit. Amen. 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 When you serve God, when you connect with God, He has some benefits for you. Amen. 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 Now, if you notice, there is a colon there. Okay? A colon in English means they get ready to list what they just said. Okay? How many English teachers? I got an English teacher in the house. If you know your English stuff, when you have a colon, okay, it means I'm getting ready to give you a list. Yeah. All right, so benefits. So let's see what those benefits are. Ready? Read. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed by the eagles. All right, five benefits. Number one, he forgives all your iniquities. There is nothing you can you can do that God won't forgive you of. No. The only one that the Bible talks about is bless, blasphemy. In order to do blasphemy, it's, it's not just one thing you do. Okay? It's several things that have to add up to that. Okay? But there's nothing God won't forgive you of. Because notice, did it say some or did it say all? It's all. Now, oh, oh. See, the Holy Ghost is moving. Yes. Listen here. People say this, and it ain't scripture. The only thing God won't forgive you of is self-murder. Suicide. You ever heard that? Yeah. yeah. What did the Bible say? Right. Who forgive the what? Oh. Oh. And, and honestly, you don't know because you ain't never committed self-murder because you listen to me. Yeah. But the Bible says, all I can do is trust what the Bible says. The Bible says he forgive all your niggas. All right? Then it says, who healeth how many of your diseases? Oh. Oh. So, if he says all, oh, that means coronavirus, that means AIDS, that means uh, diabetes, that means that means uh, high blood pressure, that means lupus, that means gangrene, that means uh, you name it, that, that means uh, tuberculosis, endometriosis, all of that. And he said, how many did he say? Now, come on, read your Bible. He said, oh, how much is left after all? So if God says all, I'm going with God. Right. Tell your name, I'm going with God. I'm going with God. Then he said, who redeemeth thy life from what? Yes, you don't have to have no car accident. And let me say this, you don't have to have a car accident for God to bless you. Yes, right. Oh, you know, I, I, I did one car, that's all, and now I'm a miracle now. God can bless you without having a car accident. Yes, right. Say your name. Yes, your life is redeemed from destruction. Yes. That means you can get on an airplane, because guess what? Uh, it, it, honestly, it's safer to be in the air than it is on the ground. Wow. You be crazy, drop. <laughs> Me and Brother Tom were going somewhere the other day, and literally, I'm on my side, and they got on the grass and passed me. Yeah. Brother Tom said, like, oh, 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 <laughs> Tornadoes come, don't have to hit your house. Right. Tornadoes, hurricanes are not acts of God. Amen. That's what the world says. Yeah. Hurricanes, tornadoes, all of those things that storm came as a result of the curse. Amen. Everything bad that's happening in the world came as a result of the curse that was turned on by Adam in Genesis chapter 3. Amen. Amen. Jesus. 
But I, but I, I, I'm going to teach you. Some of you look at me. You know how the dog do when it is. Brother Galatians. See, that's why you come here, because I'm going to feed you. I'm going to feed you what does say the Lord. Straight, but don't chase, because this is not a religious church. God wants you to get answers to your prayers. God wants your life to be better. He wants you to be transformed. He wants your marriage to be blessed. He wants your children to be blessed. They don't have to be strung out on drugs. They don't have to be having sex. They don't have to be doing all those things. But let me say this, parent. You got to get your kids under the word. And you got to get them under the word while they're young. Yeah. When they get a certain age. Yeah. But pastor, you know what? I just, I wouldn't have a church like that. Well, there's a scripture for you. God says he'll redeem the time just for you. Amen. So whatever you didn't get, whatever your children didn't get, if you make a commitment to get them in their life, God says I'll redeem it for you. Amen. See, what we do in church is we say what the Bible says, but then when we get out there, you know, boy, you got to test that out. You got to, you don't go in no, no shop and you don't, you don't drive, you don't you put no shoes on until you test it out. And we tell the boys it's okay to go and have sex, but we tell the girl save yourself. That's, that's a double standard. That's not right. Now, what's our stance on it? We go with the Bible. Amen. Sex before marriage is wrong. Amen. Sex outside of marriage is wrong. Amen. However, as your pastor, if you think you got to go and do it, protect yourself. Amen. For you wreck yourself. <laughs> you 35, 40 years old, ain't no oops, you ain't make no mistake. That's right. You a grown woman. <laughs> Mess around with a grown man. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Galatians <laughs> chapter 3. <laughs> so we got, listen, we got to tell the truth. Amen. And the problem, the reason why so many children are, 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 are inquisitive about sex, because all we tell them is, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. No. You got to talk to your children about it. Yeah. You don't want them to learn about it in the locker room on the streets. Yeah. Because they're going to get misinformation. That's right. And so the church got to do a better job and talk about this stuff. Kids get 12, 13, 14, 15, their bodies start changing. That's natural. Right. And ain't nothing wrong with that. They, they, they're supposed to have those desires. Amen. But we got to show them how to harness that until the right time. Amen. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Now, uh, we talked about things that were up the, under the curse, okay? That we talked about the curse of the law. Everybody say the curse of the law. The curse of the law. Listen to what it says in Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3 and verse number 13. Read it out loud. Ready to read. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Come on, who? Through who? Jesus. All right, look up here. Everybody that's not a Jew, we're a Gentile. Okay? So, that means you and I. There are some people that try to tell you African Americans or black folk are inferior. That ain't Bible. Right. And that's the reason they didn't want the slaves to read to find out the truth. See, that, see that's a... That's a, that, that's a, that's a uh, that's a tool of oppression. And honestly, today, they still try to use those tools of oppression, but you gotta rise up, you gotta be intelligent. You gotta know what you're talking about. You gotta know just as much as they know. Amen? Amen. And don't go in there, excuse the expression, yucking your neck with your big hoop earrings on and your red lipstick and popping that gun. When you go, you go and you walk like somebody and you talk like somebody. Young men, pull your pants up. We got to teach the young boys how to dress. Amen. Now, you know, that's Amen. cool if you want to do that at school, but when you go on the interview, if you come in my place with your pants down, thank you, sir, you go right back out the door. Right. You got to teach young children how to go to an interview. Amen. When you go to the interview, you can't wear all that red, blonde, and purple hat. You're trying to get a job. Yeah. Now, when you get a job, if it's not against company policy, you do what you want to do. But all of this stuff got to come from the church. Amen. Amen. I, you talking about my I ain't talking about you. I'm talking about my Amen. 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 You already got a job. Amen. But I'm talking about if you want to get a job, you got to look like you want to get a job. Right. Amen. Amen. Hey, let, me, let me talk about this. That's this right. is why I'm on. Stop it already with going in the store with your pajamas on. Amen. That is crazy. Up and put some clothes on. 
folk here. All my medical folk in the sanctuary wave your hand. Okay, look around. Got a lot of them, okay? So they know I ain't lying. Diabetes, unless it's what? Uh, the, the juvenile diabetes that you're born with, diabetes, high blood pressure can be reversed. Right. Amen. Now, let me tell you what they taught me in mortuary school. Okay? In mortuary school, we had to learn, we had to take pathology, where we learn about all of these different diseases and how one is a precursor for the other. The first thing that happens is you get high blood pressure. You, you don't do what you're supposed to do. I, I'm going to go out to eat my food. I'm going to put the salt on there. You start taking that diuretic. Okay? That's what that is. They give you a diuretic. You start taking the diuretic, and then you won't change your eating habits. Yeah. Then it brings on something else called diabetes. Yeah. Or sugar. Yeah. That's what we say. <laughs> so and so got sugar. Yeah. You get sugar from not eating sugar. You get sugar from eating too many carbohydrates. Yeah. French fries and potatoes and rocks yeah. and bread. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. Am I helping anybody this morning? Yeah. So, you start off with high blood pressure. Boom, now you got diabetes. The next thing that happens, and I can see the page of my pathology book right now. I see the page. The next thing that happens with you is that, okay, that diabetes, it starts affecting different organs. Yeah. Then, and normally, what happens, it affects your eyes. And then they lose their eyesight. Then they start having to get rid of limbs. Yep, yep. And anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. But again, I'm not trying to condemn anybody. This is not a condemning message. None of us are perfect. Stop going to church thinking people are perfect. That's I am not perfect. I'm a long way from it. This is not a perfect church. Well, we serve a perfect Jesus. Amen. And everybody got problems. Man. Everybody got something going on. Nothing in the devil tell you. You the only one. You know, a fork can tell a lie. Fork, I said fork. <laughs> so, my point is this. When you break your body down, I have seen people who were highly anointed by God, but they were 600 pounds. Everybody bought your fist up. Your heart is the size of your fist. Okay? Now, imagine me 600 pounds and this is my heart. Okay? I, I'm causing my, my heart to have to work hard. Yeah. And after a while, that, that heart goes down tight. Yeah. It's going to give up. Am yeah. I understand? Yeah. That's why as you get older, you got to keep your weight under control. Yeah. Pastor, why are you teaching us? Because I love you. And I want you to fulfill God's purpose for your life. Yeah. The Bible says, Psalms 91, verse 15, with long life. Will he satisfy you and show you your salvation? Now, what a lot of folks won't tell you is the truth is you decide really when you won't, won't go down. Mm -hmm. It ain't God. Now, there are times, as I was saying earlier, I've known people how they're going by God. They weigh 600 pounds. God didn't call them home. They, they ushered themselves home mm -hmm. because they wouldn't get a hold of their weight. Mm -hmm. I got a bad word for you. Y'all, I'm going to in the church. Y'all ready? Brace yourself. Grace is it. Y'all ready? Yeah. Here's, the, here's the bad word for the church. Discipline. That's right. Lack of discipline. Yep. Lack of discipline. Now, again, I love you. Do whatever strokes your boat. But I'm telling you how to live a long life. I'm telling you how to live a strong life. I'm telling you how to be healthy. I didn't tell you you couldn't eat that every day again. But if you eat that every day, let me say, say this to you. If you are not putting life inside your body, you're putting it up. Now, whatever you sow, you're going to reap. So, let me use me for example. I ain't going to get mad with me. If I'm always eating candy bars and fudge rounds, I, I just have a fetish with fudge rounds. When I worked uh, in, in, in uh, when I was doing my apprenticeship in Atlanta, Riverdale, Georgia, I, there was a, a, a line of gas station from my, we lived in an apartment then. From that apartment all the way to the funeral home, we were about a 10 mile stretch. I knew every gas station, all the way to the funeral home, they had fudge rounds. Because I, I, I mean, I, I just, I, I couldn't do without it. You know, the little daddy fudge rounds. Love them. But guess what? I was going to need my own brain. Yeah, that's right. Everybody understand? Mm -hmm. Can you have your fudge round? Yeah, every now and again. But if I eat that every day, guess what's going to happen? I'm sowing death into my body. And when you sow death, you're going to reap what? Death. Yeah. Yeah. But when you sow life, you reap what? Life. Now, now, let me help someone. I don't like fruit. I don't like vegetables. Those things are life. And let me say this. 
African American saints. We overcook our vegetables. Yeah. Oh yeah. You cook all the nutrients out of them. They all shrivel up in the pot. <laughs> you know, excuse the expression. You don't cook them to death. <laughs> and, and y'all, it, it, but see again, the word is practical. Is this practical? Amen. Yeah. And, and we ain't jumping a shout, but you listening. No, you at home, you listening. Now again, I'm just doing, I'm on assignment. This is what the Lord told me to do. Told me to have a healing service after you get through teaching. That's what I'm going to do. Because see, some of you in this area, there's a lot of religion in this area. Mm -hmm. And these religious spirits don't believe nothing. That's right. And they don't want you to believe nothing. Amen. And that's one of the reasons they come against the preaching of the word. Amen. It's not people, it's spirits. Yes. Territorial yes. spirits that yes. have been here for hundreds of years. Yes. Because nobody will stand and flat foot preach the word because they allow persecution to get them out of the way. Yes. It's the truth. Yes, it is. Oh, they mad. They don't come to church no more. That's the devil. That's right. It ain't God. That's the devil. And some of them ain't getting nothing to none of them. Yeah. That's all right. But what they do is, and there's a particular young lady in this church by the Spirit of God, that she knows, she don't think I know what the Lord showed me. She goes and talks to her family. That's why her family don't come. And she, she's, a, she's a rattlesnake. She's being used by the devil, mm -hmm. but you've been exposed. Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost will never let you be fooled. Amen. Amen. And, and the, Amen. And the, you ain't fooling me. Now, my God, I ain't talking about a name. I ain't talking about that. I love them. I'm going to love them, but I know you. You ain't fooling me. Amen. You ain't fooling me. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. See, that's what spending time in prayer will do. Sure It'll help you become sensitive to the Lord, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, my time is up. Now, again, I, I'm not attacking anybody. I, you got to teach out of love. You got to minister out of love. And you got to do it with grace. Amen. 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 Now, look at Exodus, and I'm done. I said, I don't say two or three things. I'm sorry, y'all. I apologize. That 88 ain't no joke. I'm here. 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 i am here i am here i am all right, here we go. Number one, healing is not automatic. Number two, God does not make people sick. Number three, healing can only work for you if you know about it. I want you to remember that now. Healing can only work for you if you know about it. Where there is no knowledge, there cannot be any power. Next, God does not heal people against their will. So in other words, if I am ready to die, God respects my will because he gave human beings free will. He's not going to make you be saved and he's not going to make you live if you want to die. It's your choice. All right? Healing is the believer's right. It belongs to you. You ought to get like Fred Self or Blind Mel or Jelly. I want my daddy rockets. If, you, if I found out it's one of my benefits, then guess what? I want my stuff. What do we say? He said he healed all our diseases. Is that one of your benefits? Yeah. Then you got a right to. So just accept, stop accepting. Amen? Now, I didn't tell you. Let me say this. Healing does not mean you don't take your medication. You hear what I said? That's foolishness. Unless the Holy Spirit tells you to get off of it, you don't get off of it. Because guess what? The medicine can't heal you no way. That's the right. medicine helps you or uh, holds you until the healing can come. Yeah. Jesus is the healer. Yeah. Somebody say Jesus is the healer. Jesus Jesus is the healer. Is the healer. Now, healing is not God's best. Health is. Okay. Healing is not God's best. Health is. And you have a lot to do with that, with making us over your body. That's why I'm going to eat what I want to eat. I'm going to put all this salt on this food if I want to. And guess what? A couple of years, 
When we walk the floor and wear black, we sing Kumbaya. Sad singing, flower brown. Okay? Now, we believers, we have a covenant of healing. Pick up your Say this with me. Healing, healing. Is, my right. is my right. Hell, Hell is, my right. is my right. I am the redeemed of the Lord. I am the redeemed of the Lord. So whatever I say, whatever I say is, so. is so. Jesus, Jesus has redeemed me has redeemed from me. sickness from sick and And that you rose again. 